Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad today. This is our Skylab module for our uh, orbital station, the uh, Tremoria. Tremonia. I'm not 100% on the pronunciation, but uh, it'll be listed, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, it is going to be a nighttime launch. Our relative inclination is down to about 0 0.03, now 0 0.02 degree. So we will activate our SAS, set our throttle to full. This is our somewhat new, this is a revision of the DN2A, uh, this is the DN2AX. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and launch. I, I will talk about this on the way up. So ignition sequence start. And looks like we have a light on all our engines. Uh, engine count is down to four. Fantastically enough, yeah, we have the uh, two RS-25 DEs and then two uh, RD-171s and our boosters replacing that uh, cluster of E-1s, which I'm pretty sure was uh, three. It was three E-1s on this, the DN-1 initially, and the DN-2 maybe had four. So considering there's a tapering there at the fairing, maybe it was four, because four... E1s would take up a little bit more space than a single RD-170. And our relative inclination is climbing. So I started this roll way too soon. Look at me, talking, not paying attention. So I'm going to fly this to orbit as best I can, try to mitigate this relative inclination, get us set up for a docking, and I will pick all of you up in orbit. It was, in fact, four. Uh, this is a derivative of the DN2A, which initially was a dn 2 B. I don't think it ever actually carried the A upper stage, which was the four RL-10s. Uh, this upper stage is actually five RL-10s. Um, that choice of engine was made specifically because of their multiple ignitions. We're going to need those if we're going to perform uh, orbital docking maneuvers. But uh, anyway, uh, the boosters went down from four E-1s to a single RD-171, which gives us a slightly better runtime, less weight, and uh, slightly less thrust. That, however, is offset by the two RS-25 DEs, which provide more thrust than the, uh, I think it was three um, HG-3s they were replacing. I guess initially, the very first variant to this, it was uh, three J-2s, and at one point, I think one of them was even an aerospike, but um, that was a long time ago. Anyway, booster set was nice and clean, fairing set was also nice and clean. This thing... Uh, has a much better thrust to weight ratio than the DN series it replaced, so we can actually maintain a positive angle here, although we are trying to hit a much higher orbit than uh, what this vehicle, it would, I can't even say accustomed to. This is the first flight for this variant of this vehicle, but it's going much higher than the DN series is used to hauling cargo to because it uh, has to hit that 400 kilometer orbit. Uh, if it wants to have any chance of uh, making a rendezvous with our uh, space station, so that was that pretty much. Uh, the rest of the ride was nice and smooth, no engine failures, nothing weird to talk about. I um, actually think I did pretty well with this ascent path and at some point just uh, giving up on hitting the altitude in favor of just translating uh, all of that into speed, which at this point is a lot more critical coming up on flame out. And that was uh, engine flame out, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, stage off the core. Boom. That will certainly deorbit. Now we uh, want to peg our throttle back down to zero. I'm going to go ahead and bring online these five uh, RL-10s. Uh, the RL-10s were chosen because they have uh, ten ignitions apiece, which uh, we are certainly going to need. We are not quite in orbit, but I want to set up this maneuver node. You know, this is kind of a first for me, at least in uh, RSS. This is kind of the way you just do things in stock Kerbal Space Program. But yeah, that's going to be our circ burn. Yeah, now, didn't think it was going to get me anywhere close to an encounter, but it was worth a shot, right? All right, and that's uh, 546 meters per second. My god. Ah, RCS on. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Um... <laughs> We're just going to drain all of that RCS fuel. We don't need to be draining from our uh, station component yet, although we do have quite an abundance of uh, aerosene and nitrogen tetroxide on board. So I'll go ahead and unlock that. Why not? We can... It will assist us after all. Okay. 
and it says that burn is going to take eight hours and 48 minutes. That's uh, obviously not the case. <laughs> I just don't think it has computed the numbers for these RL10s yet, but we can displace uh, 1.6 kilometers per second in six minutes. Uh, so we're probably going to do about a third of that. Uh, we should light now. We should have lit a minute ago. Uh-oh. Are you all edged? Very stable. Ignition. Yeah, it looks like a good light on all five. And so we'll just uh, angle into the node and hopefully bring our periapsis uh, up to orbit and then that will switch with our apoapsis and we'll get it up to about 400 kilometers which is uh, the resting orbit for our station. Now I'm not 100% on this but I think this might actually be my very first apogee kick to orbit at least in RP0 or RSS. This is kind of like the standard method for doing things in stock Kerbal Space Program but uh, not so much in RSS and well, I don't feel bad about it. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is probably much more standard a maneuver than uh, it is in this video game. At least for real life. There's our orbital camera change, so we'll be coming up on engine cutoff here very soon. Alright, 409 by 289. It's going to do us pretty well, so let's uh, take a look out here at the map. And uh, we got some catching up to do. That's us. That's the station, so we're just going to uh, warp around and hope this doesn't take so long that all of our uh, liquid hydrogen boils off. They are in a balloon tank, after all. But it looks like just a couple of hours worth, perhaps. And getting closer. Okay. Um... I wonder then if we can make a maneuver here, split the difference, and make enough adjustments to make this worthwhile. Yeah, this is another case where maybe I should have just let MechJeb do the heavy lifting, but uh, I wasn't sure about our Delta V budget, so I just decided to do it by hand. I uh, can't really tell you why, and if you care enough to actually watch through all this sped up footage, maybe you can, I don't know, glean some knowledge on how to do orbital rendezvous, although I'm sure most of the people watching this already know how to do orbital rendezvous, because uh, most of you play RSS. You, can, you know, how what a troublesome beast it can be sometimes, especially on things as large as Earth. The larger the planet, the more fickle uh, getting an orbital rendezvous can be. But uh, we've got it almost nailed down to something kind of specific, but it's doing that fickle thing where you move it just a touch and then it jumps halfway around and the nodes disappear. Yeah, it's just uh, another one of those fun, fun aspects about playing with a super heavily modded Kerbal Space Program that just uh, keeps you on your toes sometimes. Uh, a little a little too much so. But uh, that's that's looking pretty good. So here's old me to talk about it some more. All right, there it is. Uh, that node is going to give us a separation of about 700 meters and a relative speed of 7.6 meters per second. Uh, I say that's well worth it, considering it costs us uh, 28 point whatever meters per second. So we're gonna come out of time warp and uh, that node's in 54 minutes. Actually, we're just gonna go ahead and time warp much, much closer. And uh, we'll make our adjustment as we approach the node so as to not uh, screw it all up. All right, let's get ourselves angled in here. We've got about four and a half minutes until we have to light these things. Burn should take about seven seconds, it says, on these uh, RL10s. Which, how much of that is boiled off? Doesn't look like a whole lot, actually. Well, there, there you can see what our boil off has done. Right, 45 seconds or so to go. Let's just uh, get it down to 20 something and start to ullage in our engines. Risky, very stable. We'll just uh, lay here on the RCS for a couple of seconds. Ignition. And 
shut down. All right, it says we are going to be at about 4.2 kilometers. I'm just going to use RCS to round this out a bit, get us down to something a little more reasonable. Yeah, how about that? How about 300 meters, 270 meters? RC oh, we can't turn the RCS off because we don't actually have a connection. All right, match velocity is at closest approach, 7.9 meters per second in one hour, 26 minutes. Perfect. And so we'll just uh, speed around towards uh, where our burn is. It's uh, not a very big one, so we really shouldn't see too many problems here, right? Right? Well, anyway, we're close enough to our burn. We execute said burn, and then we've got a, a good long while to wait. So we'll transfer over some fuel, shut off the RCS system, or rather we'll make some maneuvers to put us on a nice close approach, shut off our RCS system, and then uh, realize that here we are, parked very close to the station, our RCS is off and we have no signal. This is a problem, um, but one I think we can solve. So we'll just uh, jump over here to the station, EVA, one of our very brave Kerbals. Uh, she is a scientist, not a rated pilot. So um, SAS will be still left to the automated control core, or if the cupola has a built-in SAS, then maybe that will help us out a little bit. But, um, all right. Good. She has her own life support and systems and settings and plenty of battery and fuel for her RCS pack. Uh, there's tons and tons, uh, literal tons of life support inside uh, this Skylab module, enough to subsist for years, probably. Um, so we'll just uh, get her into the cupola board. There we go. And look at that local control. We have our RCS system back. Yay! Oh, that's awesome. I was kind of terrified there that we were just going to have to let this thing drift aimlessly past the station until we got signal again. So uh, let's just get ourselves angled in, make sure we control from here, and then we can go back about these docking maneuvers. All right, well, the docking maneuvers. Uh, this thing is heavy, um, probably coming in somewhere close to... 55, 60 tons, maybe. So even with these uh, highly upgraded Aerozine and N2O thrusters, uh, just the sheer mass of this thing makes it pretty difficult to wrestle with, which is my excuse, and I am sticking to it. They're also a little off balance. Um, that was me forgetting to use RCS build aid again. So feel free to yell at me about that. And, of course, docking port alignment indicator, which I still don't use. Don't really feel like I need it sometimes. Although this might have been one of those times where that should have been a clean dock, I, th I think, except that we're off by like, yeah, a pretty substantial amount. So after tearing all the paint and probably screwing up some sensors on that docking port, we'll come around again. Eh, that angle is way too far off. So we'll adjust and then try to re-angle ourselves in. Um, I think I've decided not to offset thrusters anymore ever again. It makes for just wonky, wonky piloting. Yeah, we'll just we'll get rid of the paint on the other side there. That's not going to work. Try again. Um, docking, not my forte. <laughs> so we'll back way the hell off, try to get ourselves on a much cleaner alignment this time, and then just bake our approach. Of course, obviously... With the aid of the station turning on its thruster system to help our alignment, finally we'll get ourselves just the right angle. Finally. Jeez. Well, that took uh, way longer than it was supposed to, but we now have a complete... Uh, well, not a complete station. There's probably some more things that need to be moved onto this. Uh, I would like to move the docking arm off of this and onto here because we can strut it. So I, I think that's what we're, we're going to do uh, for the time being, although I am going to wait until we have a uh, consistent signal because <laughs> that would be a good thing, right? All right, let's, uh, let me turn off satellites so I know what I'm looking at. And we'll just uh, warp ourselves around a little bit. 
get ourselves uh, close to a place where we can bounce a signal off of something. So wouldn't that be much, much better? And should be good right about here, I'm sure. Uh, let's come all the way out of time warp. That should be better. All right. Exit map view. We can get rid of that window. And let's, uh, which side do we want to put the docking arm on? I think maybe this side. So we can have easy access to the door. All right. So we'll just go uh, control from here. Fantastic. Let's hope we can do this smoothly. Although I, I, I really doubt it. This is a really bad idea, just for the record. Locking avionics, great. Activate avionics. RCS. Stability. Oh no, 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 tell me I didn't. I did. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> that was so dumb. EVA. You gotta keep that thing from hitting the solar panels. Oh, why are you give me stupid view? was really, really dumb. Extra, extra dumb. Okay. Um, push. Well, this turned into an exercise of stupidity. So I've gone ahead and sped this up uh, because really I was trying to concentrate extra hard on how dumb I was being, or rather not think about how dumb I was being, and uh, just be a pilot for a second. Anyway, my intention here was to use the EVA and the jetpack to nudge this arm close enough to the station where I could use the uh, KIS struts to kind of lock it in place, at least for the time being, and then uh, hopefully on our next shuttle flight up, the shuttle could dock with it, maneuver it into position, and reattach it. But at least it wouldn't be drifting aimlessly off into space. Um, that was the plan. Now there was an obvious better solution uh, right in front of me this entire time that I just did not think of. But right about here is when I had it very close to being in position. At least, uh, you know, I thought. I just needed to keep it from twirling around so much. Or be able to get myself into position to grab that strut like that and then attach it to something. But it has already spun around and, yeah, the only angles at which it could be strutted were not going to work. And it was soon going to be out of range. So... Back to the nudging it around, I thought, hey, why not? Um, we've got it pretty close. If I can grab one of those, but I couldn't even get the uh, those things to right-click the transfer hoses or whatever they're called. Um, yeah, we're not being selectable, but the struts were, so I figured, why not just give it a chance? And uh, it was... I don't know, probably about a minute and a half from now when I kind of thought, well, okay, let's get it not to hit the panels, let's get it clear of the station, and then uh, let's go get the habitation module. It has its own fuel, its own life support, and two docking ports that we can use to not only capture the docking arm, but then it's got everything we need to maneuver it into position. Alright, so let's just get over here to the door come on what? oh no oh no 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 oh no her RCS pack is empty oh no well, I 
hate to do this to you with the cliffhanger and all, but uh, I've kept you here long enough. That's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.